Welcome back to another episode of the Casey Campbell podcast. Casey Campbell with you, of course, and pleased to be joined by a regular guest on this podcast. It isn't the one, the only Matt Tift, who, of course, is the co-owner of Team Live Fast. Um, how's it? How, okay, so we're in about, you know, we're four races into the new season. How do you think it's going for you guys? It's, uh, I mean, first of all, there's a lot just to get down to Daytona, just to get everything rolling. Um, so the first two races of the year, um, result-wise, were very good for us. Um, you know, there was little things here and there we were working on. Um, the nice thing was that we kind of had a little bit of lead in time, um, just little things to, to pick up here and there with the, with the duels and, and things like that to make things better. So uh, end up in being a, a really good 500 for us. Unfortunately, we had a little bit of damage on a roof, actually, um, because we were on the lead lap and missed the big one. But a, a later piece of debris came up and hit our roof and basically acted like a parachute, like one of the old wickers um, on the cars. So uh, that kind of kept us out of contention there. Um, but then the road course, we had Scott Hecker driving for us. And uh, that was cool because I've been friends and neighbors with Scott for a long time. And, and he and I both raced for BJ. So that was pretty neat. Um, but uh, he did a good job there for his cup debut coming home 28th. And, you know, we set the expectations on, at the beginning of the year that we knew we we're going to be a 25th to 30th place car. Um, when it came to the big tracks, as far as the intermediate tracks, we we're going to be, you know, legitimately 30th. So um, came to Homestead, unfortunately, um, started the race and had a power steering issue, uh, very similar to what Bubba had at the beginning of this last race. So had to go behind the wall, um, fix it, lost about four laps, but then our speed, by the end of the race um, was a 29th place car um, where we feel like we probably should have been. And then um, Vegas, we were a, a legit straight up 30th place car. So I feel like that was our first non-eventful, pretty smooth weekend. And there's lots of things that we were, um, that we learned from. And, uh, you know, we, um, we definitely took some big steps to get better. Our communication has gotten better and better each week. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of learning my role at the track as being an owner. I think we're getting the, uh, you know, between the crew chief and, and Davey, our competition director on the box, what they're doing is better. My pit crew stuff is getting better. So things are slowly coming more and more together there. And, um, you know, you always take the uh, the first five races um, going through the West Coast swing and come back and reevaluate. And I think the good thing we've seen is the guys are gelling more together. Um, things are getting a little bit smoother as we go on. And that's what you want to see. You don't want to see it spiral and go down the other way. And I think we've positioned ourselves well to be, um, you know, where we're running right now is a good spot. Um, but then, you know, going forwards, we have a couple more cars. We got to chase um, to try to get that to that, you know, 30th place in owner's points is a big, big goal for us this year. And with the seven and the 77, you know, they're, they're pretty stout this year over at Spires. So getting to that point is going to be a big thing we chase all year long. And uh, it's, it's a fairly lofty goal to get um, to where they are. But um, it's, it's achievable. It's going to be tough. But, you know, if we persevere and don't make mistakes and keep cars in one piece like we have so far, um, we have a real shot at that. So it's just it's grinding every week, man. But I'm excited for this weekend because it's Phoenix. Um, typically, the go fast racing cars that we have now this year did very well on short tracks. So uh, this is an exciting one for me um, to go down to and go watch in the box for that race because, um, you know, downforce stuff has so much, um, the downforce tracks has so much to do from wind tunnel time, what you learn there. And we don't have those resources right now. But when you go to the um, to the short tracks, I feel like our strong suit has been mechanical grip. Um, it's just, you know, it's not something we've had the chance to run very much of yet. And luckily, Phoenix is one of those tracks to where if you have your, your heights right and your splitter where you want it to be, uh, you can kind of adjust some mechanical things and be fairly decent. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited for this weekend. Yeah. So, of course, that, you know, you're in a, in a few weeks, of course, there's Phoenix, there's Atlanta. And there's the Bristol Dirt Race, and you got somebody coming in there to uh, do that as well. Yeah, so we announced the other day, um, maybe a week ago now. It, time goes fast when you're doing the owner side of this I know, deal. I, know. I can't believe it's already been. I can't believe it's already been almost a month since Daytona. That's that's freaking nuts. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, so we got uh, it, it goes by so fast. But so we have Shane Golobic. He'll be um, joining the team, um, big time sprint car and midget driver for uh, Matt Wood Racing. So. It's been um, really cool to work with those guys. Uh, I've, I've always envied um, sprint car drivers because to me, 
those are the guys with the biggest, we'll call it guts out there, um, you know, to go drive a sprint car and just put their, uh, put everything on the line when they go race. So I think the dirt knowledge there will be really cool. Um, Frankie Kerr, our crew chief, he's got hundreds of wins in a sprint car um, back in the old school sprint cars. So I think they're going to have a good time working together. And I think this whole week I've been just watching live feeds of, um, of the Bristol, um, you know, the, the dirt track um, with the late models testing out there, the world of outlaws and stuff. So uh, I'm just a fan watching right now with the, with the late models, but we know that's going to be a, um, an interesting race to say the least. Yeah, for sure. Um, of course, you had Scott Heckard at the Daytona road course. Is he going to be in more of the road course races? Because there's, there's more of them on the schedule. There's a lot more on the schedule. Yeah, we're going to have some announcements coming up soon um, as far as, you know, road courses going forward. Um, one of the big things we, we kind of did this year was we knew going into next year with the next gen car um, that we needed to build a good foundation with the team. And BJ does a great job on the ovals. But one of the things he'll tell you is, hey, if there's a, a chance for me to get out of the car and make the team better, he wants to do that. So um you know of course there's opportunities we've looked at um obviously bringing in scott into the car um at the daytona road course so there'll be some stuff coming up about what we're going to announce yet and we're still formalizing plans of what that's going to be um but i mean the first one is really cool going to coming up next uh, going to coda so i'm pumped for that track just to go um to a new place i mean it's not often you go to a new nascar track uh, in general let alone um you know be the first one for the cup series going there so I'm um, I'm very excited for that race just to be you know involved in the whole weekend down there at Coda. So yeah, we'll be um, ex- announcing some pretty exciting stuff coming soon with that. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting for sure. I know that I know that you have also kind of uh, did some live streaming and stuff. Don't you have a weekly show now? We do. Yeah, I got a podcast too. I'm joining you, bud. Yay! <laughs> Yeah, no, I got a, I got, um, it's called Life in the Fast Lane um, show. So we do a podcast every Tuesday and Thursday. Somehow this week I end up doing Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, but uh, it's a fun show. Oops, there goes the camera. Um, it's a fun show. Um, hopefully I don't do too much of that, which I've dropped my green screen plenty of times during my show. Uh, so we'll keep that as the blemish for this one. But man, it's, it's fun. We've um, I had my first guest on the other day. He was an um, up and coming MMA fighter. So getting to talk to people like that. Um, last night we did a, an interview from the Cavs um, Legion layer, which is their esports team. Um, so I don't get to, you know, I don't get to talk to these people normally. So getting a platform to do that, um, it's growing a lot. So definitely make some, make sure you go check that out. And we, um, we put this stuff out on um, you know, on Spotify and iTunes podcast and all that sort of stuff. But um, it is a live stream every Tuesday and Thursday um, evening. So uh, it's a lot of me uh, not knowing how to use technology and me being an idiot. So it's, um, it's a lot of fun because you get to see what I don't know about technology. <laughs> and you're still trying to use, use, learn how to use Zoom a year later. So dude, I cannot, I can't figure out how to do the stupid screen lock thing. It's bad. Yeah, well, you figured it out the first time, or I would, um, or we wouldn't have done this because I'd be, I'd be not crap. I'd, I'd be, it's like, okay, so you're in that center, and okay, you're in the box there, okay, that, all right. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm not the, the best with that stuff. So, yeah, yeah this general, well, it's, it's fun though because the show, you know, we, we talk a lot about racing here. Um, we talked a little bit last time, I think, about the acting stuff, but um, what's cool about the show there is, you know, I haven't had a podcast before. I know other guys beat me to it with like the Sunday money stuff and, and the um, class case of emotion sort of a deal. But it's been fun because I get to talk about things that are going on in the world or pop culture stuff or things that I find interest in. And uh, and that's been fun because, again, as a driver, you go, uh, you know, car was loose this weekend. Guys at the shop did a great job, blah, blah, blah. Um, I get to talk about stuff that I want to talk about. So that's been that's been really cool. Yeah, I bet. Um, so there's also, you know, heading into. Uh, so what's going to what's it going to be like? What do we have like? you know for team what's going to be love for team live fast of course um how many drivers do you think might be in cars this year you know for all the oval races we'll have bj in there and then i'm hoping um with the road course deal we're putting together here that'll just be um one other driver uh, the rest of the year and that and that should be really about it so um don't expect a huge rotation of people in there other than shane coming in for the dirt race um, like i said BJ will be in for all the oval races, um, and then he might be in for a few of the road courses too. Just depends how these deals plan um, pan out here. But again, it's 
we're not doing it to go just try to get a quick buck out of every anything. It's only to make the team better, um, bring in somebody who is a road course ringer, so to speak, and make it to where we are learning something going into next year and the years following. Because we know on the NASCAR deal now, we are going in, in the Cup Series, we're going to run a lot more road course races. So the more we can learn on that and become better as a team, we know that's, that's a strength we're going to have to have moving forward. Even though the next gen car is totally different, just learning the little things about going to places that are not just Sonoma and Watkins Glen and the Roval. We have so many more tracks we're going to now that you have to be able to adapt and learn those things. So bring in people that are, you know, um, like Scott, who did a lot of stuff with Mercedes out in, in Europe and, and did that in the Pirelli World Challenge and doing it in America, too, with the Mercedes AMG car, um, bringing that to our team. Um, really helps you know learn some stuff and elevate our game between brake packages and um, brake split and um, but also just you know transmissions and things like that um, that we're really trying to work on to become a better team with that and um, be able to sync up our stuff to be a better team moving forward into later this year into next year um, so it's a building block it's not a it's not a simple answer in there but everything we're doing is for a purpose to keep on building okay um, any new partners to announce we have some. Yeah, um, we're going to have, well, you know, we announced Keen Parts earlier this year. So yeah. we're going to have something um, coming soon, announcing all the races that they're going to be doing this year. So I'm, I'm very excited about that because they're going to be a major, major partner um, of ours this year. And then we have one coming for uh, later on this season. And then obviously we just recently announced the um, Chain Globic deal. So they'll be bringing on um, their deal. I'm, I'm sure with um, Oak Grove Ford that they are, have been a big part of um, out in California with them. But um, man, it's been fun. We got to shoot some uh, cool stuff with celsius out in florida um there's a bad video of me falling off a jet ski out there trying to grab a can of celsius because i'm so coordinated with things not um <laughs> and uh and yeah so i mean we're we're working on it every day you know i'm just trying to build some partnerships but it's weird because this year obviously there's people that want to join um, and do things, but then people are really looking at Q3 and Q4 of their their spending categories this year because nobody knew what to expect. Um, of course, there's a glimmer of hope now um, with people coming back to the track, with people um, spending more money again, uh, retail and um, e-commerce wise, and just everything across the board is starting to pop back up a little bit. And hopefully, we can use that to our advantage to build relationships not only for this year. Um, but also going into next year. So, um, but if you would have told me last year, we start off the year um, with motorsports games and Xbox on the card, I would have said that you've been dreaming. So it's been very cool at this point. And then um, this weekend we'll have service sunscreen back on the car. We haven't announced yet. So I guess we're announcing on your show. Sure, um, yeah. yeah. So they've been a, a big partner of mine throughout the um, years of my career. So really cool that I'm back in the car in Vegas. We'll have them back on uh, this weekend in, um, in Phoenix. And um, I, I love the I love the paint scheme. Looks like you're jumping into a pool. And there's nobody more that loves to wear flip flops than BJ McLeod. So that, that's a perfect fit. Awesome. All right, Matt Tiff, thank you so much for taking some time. And uh, let's have we'll, we'll uh, talk to you when you uh, decide to ever come back on here. All right. Well, I'm I'm a regular now, so I got to right. Yeah. Why not? <laughs>